Tonight, friends don't let friends use XP, another security flaw in Snapchat, and the FDA approves a little camera for your colon. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 20 for February 7th, 2014. I'm Shannon Morse, and let's get right to the tech feed. Microsoft is trying to start a viral campaign to get people to stop using Windows XP. In a blog post, a company spokesman said that only 60 days remain until the end of support for Windows XP. They acknowledge that readers of the blog are unlikely to be running XP, but urge them to spread the word to their less enlightened family and friends. Microsoft's last public patch for the OS hits April 8th. That was April 8th, people. Windows XP first shipped in 2000. Yet more than one quarter of the world's PCs are still running it. That's horrible. It didn't take long for LinkedIn to pull the plug on its intro app. Released in October, the iPhone app displayed a sender's profile information within iOS Mail. There were questions about security because of all the incoming emails were routed through a LinkedIn proxy server, so pictures and profile data could be added to the emails. The app will be shut down on March 7th of this year. LinkedIn is also cutting the cord on Slidecast pre presentations starting on April 30th, 2014. All of this in a move to simplify. In a blog post, the senior VP of products and user experience, Deep Nishar, said, we need to concentrate on fewer things. Yep. A cybersecurity researcher found yet another flaw in Snapchat. Go figure, this time launching denial of service attacks on the user's iPhone. Jamie Sanchez, a researcher for Telefonica, found the flaw, which allows a hacker to send thousands of messages to the user's iPhone, making it glitch out and eventually crash or require a hard reset. In Snapchat, a token is created for each message to verify the user's identity. Sanchez was able to reuse old tokens to send new messages within a matter of seconds. Sanchez has not contacted Snapchat about the vulnerability because he says the company has no respect for the cybersecurity research community. Previously, Snapchat was informed of another vulnerability and they ignored the issue for several, several weeks. Now coming up, take a journey through your colon Jetson style. <sighs> and now we're joined by blogger and author Robert Scoble, co-author of the new book, Age of Context, Mobile, Sensors, Data, and the Future of Privacy. Thank you for joining us, Robert. How are you? Hey, really good. Thanks for having me on. Now, I wanted to ask you a little bit about Google. Now, they announced an update to its Google Now feature on Android. The feature tells you when to leave for the airport to catch a flight, to takes into account your mode of transportation, how early you want to arrive, among a bunch of other factors. You have to enter this information manually. So how long before Google Now will be able to figure out all of this stuff for itself? I don't think very long because you can you can start doing a, a, a series of rules for when you get to the airport. I fly a lot, so I, I know that you need to be the, at the gate 10 minutes before uh, the flight leaves, otherwise you won't get on the plane. You need to be at the front counter a half an, or 45 minutes before the flight leaves if it's a domestic flight uh, to get your bags on, although you can often uh, negotiate up to 30 minutes out. And uh, if you're flying internationally, you have to add another 15 minutes. Now. What the, the variables are, do you have a rental car to return? Do you have, um, is there a long security line? If there's a long security line, you have to add a, additional time. Uh, it would be really cool if uh, Google Now could figure out all those variables and tell me, hey, there's a one hour security line, so you gotta <laughs> leave earlier today than normal. <laughs> that would be awesome. Now I noticed also you have Google Glass on. So the yeah. New York Police Department, they're testing Google Glass. And meanwhile, 15,000 UK cops are going to be getting iPad minis running an app that predicts crime spikes in specific locations. So yeah. who do you think is better equipped for contextual future? <laughs> but in terms of what, Google or uh, Apple? Yes, Google or <laughs> Apple. Which of the cops will beat, will win? <laughs> well, I think both have a role in, in policing. I, my son's actually going to John Jay University in New York and is uh, trying to be a cop. Um, so we've talked a little bit about this. This lets you run after a suspect and even record video and take pictures and get information from other other officers as you're running and chasing somebody. So I think Glass is, is uh, a, a, a unique uh, use case for uh, police officers, just like it is for surgeons and for other vertical markets. 
the iPad, though, is much easier to enter data. So if I'm going to do a, uh, an arrest report or something like that, you're really going to want a, 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 either a tablet or something with a keyboard, maybe a, a Chromecast. Uh, I'm sorry, a Chromebook. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely um, agree with you like there. That. Yeah, I totally agree about Google Glass. I think, th yeah, that would be a lot easier to use if you're chasing somebody. Yeah, and, and I, I think uh, you're starting to see uh, police departments to even mandate some of their officers to wear wearable cameras to record what uh, what is going on, both to protect the, the officer, but also to get uh, more evidence on on uh, whoever they're trying to arrest, right, and and be able to use that in court. Um, so I think I think this is a trend that's just starting. I definitely agree. Well, thank you so much, Robert. It was really a pleasure to talk to you. Thank and you. we're going to end with this. It took nine years, but now you can take the pill cam on a journey through your belly. The FDA this week announced approved the device which broadcasts video while transversing your colon. The user eats the device about a width of a pencil and for the next eight hours it travels through the digestive tract. The pill cam will give both patients and doctors a less invasive alternative to a colonoscopy. But please everyone don't post the video on YouTube. I really don't want to see that. <laughs> so weird. That's it for tech news tonight and remember to subscribe to this podcast at twit.tv slash tn2. Our next newscast is Monday. Monday at 10 a.m. Pacific. I'm Shannon Morse. Stay classy, internets. Good night. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.